everyone, this is Ben back with you in the model shop. Uh, as I mentioned in the previous video, um, this is like part two where I show you the photo etch detail work that I did on the um, ship's cranes and some of my tips and tricks. There's a lot of great videos out there on YouTube that uh, emphasize working with photo etch and some of the things that you can do to make it all work. Um, I demonstrate in this video like a teeny, teeny, tiny part. Uh, that's difficult to work with, but you know, to show that it can be done. I show you some of my uh, tricks that make things a little bit easier. And really, the big thing is a lot of this photo etch detail, it's really just not that hard to put together. The folds aren't very complicated, it's just a really good kit. And that Big Ed puts together, Edward Photo Etch Detail, uh, that I bought for this thing. You guys have seen these before. So, the high quality parts make it easy and make everything look really awesome. Most of the stuff you just cut it out and you glue it on. But uh, I do talk about annealing in this video and I go over how to do that and give you a little demo and then um, I also just cut things out and put them on. So anyway without further ado we'll get the video started here. Just know that like some of the things I'm saying refer to the other video and vice versa because I shot it all together is one thing. It was just really too long. So anyway, uh, thanks a lot again today for watching and let me know if you have any questions or comments. Alright, getting underway here with our cranes and our photo etch, photo etch uh, little tutorial session that I said I would do. Uh, I went ahead and did a little bit of prep work on the two main cranes. A um, couple of things here set this down. Let's start with uh, this main post here on the crane. Uh, you see I've got basically this little X here. And the reason I did this is the bottom of these are keyed and where you drop it in on the ship and that flat spot actually faces the bow. And this is important because if you want your crane to go forward and follow parallel to the ship those two little holes on the top also need to line up with the front of the ship. And when you glue this part on, uh, you can have it face anywhere you want because this thing's supposed to turn. So I want them to face forward, so I, I mark this line out. The other thing is I have this line right here. That actually marks the deck because I have some photo etch metal that I'm going to attach here, uh, some ladders, and I want them to be you know, above the deck line. All right, so uh, this is some initial prep work here. Um, the most complicated, or so far most complicated piece of photo etch that I can show you guys is, is this little piece that's got multiple bends on it. It's not too clever like, uh, or too complicated like the, uh, the ship's um, racks that hold the boats up, but it's the same principles. Those look fancy, they're just a bunch of parts folded together here. But there are multiple folds here, and so I'll show you how on this one I went from well, how I got to here, starting from here. So first order of business is you got to go ahead and cut that out. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, now we got our piece cut out. Uh, this is my photo etch bender that I use. Uh, my original bender, this is the very first one that I ever had, was this little thing. Um, as you can see, it, it just used like an Allen key. to uh, had no spring, and it spreads apart, and you had this little tab and this teeny little tab and this kind of like break angle. And when I bought this years ago, I think this thing was like $30. Um, pretty huge ripoff, but at the time it was the only thing available. And, I, and I'm talking like this thing's probably eight or nine years old now. Uh, what I use now is these guys. This is called, here you go, the Hold Fast, made in the United States by the smallshop.com. I bought this on eBay. I am pretty confident that this gentleman makes these. Uh, from scratch with his little machine shop at home. Uh, they are in a variety of sizes. Uh, this was not cheap. I think, you know, I want to say it was like, it might have even been $60, which seems like a lot, but uh, I don't know how I survived without it, essentially, if you do photo etch work, because everything that you need is right here. Um, there's a spring underneath to help move this thing up and down and you can take this loose and spin it around and then you've got 
a giant straight edge to work with. Uh, these bevels allow you to uh, work multiple angles. So anyway, it's a really good tool. You don't have to use it, but I highly recommend it. Um, you get this, and then it comes with uh, this little Better Tools. It's not really a razor blade, but it's a tool that you use to slide underneath and bend your photo etch up with. Uh, another good alternative, don't cut yourself, is a razor blade. That works really well also. So, that being said, let's get started here with our piece. And I'll zoom in here so you can see what's going on. Hopefully I don't mess this up. Alright, here's our piece. And if I zoom in, you can see that there are a couple of seams right here and right here where this thing gets folded. So the initial question probably is going to be, how do you fold this one, this one, and that piece without messing anything up? And you need to look at the final product and just kind of think ahead about all of the folds that you need. But basically we can get away with, uh, this is just 90 degrees, this piece, this edge, and this rail are a 90 degree bend, and we can do both of them uh, at the same time. And so just pick an edge that... Uh, holds the whole thing down tighten this up like so and then I use this big bender even though it's kinda huge you just get underneath it Look at that a little bit like so to the base come right up at a 90 degree and then your piece is bent. Yeah, this is a little bit loose, but don't worry about that. Take that loose, slide it out of there. Now you've got your 90 degree bend. And all you have to do is repeat it for the other side. And there's plenty of room here uh, for this. This finger tab is so low, there's plenty of room to bend this other part up 90 degrees as well and not have there be any problems with it. Uh, banging into the space up here. For this one we'll go ahead and I'll switch over to the razor blade. You use it the same way. Just slide it underneath, get right to the edge, come up at your 90 degrees. And then you're done, you've got your piece. Now we have these little edges right here uh, on the rail. Let's see if I can set this up right. All right, you've got these little bends right here left on the rail. And actually, these tweezers that I'm holding are pretty big and flat, and that's so fragile right there, you could just bend it in uh, with the tweezers. And so, let's take a look at the other final result piece, one that I put together here. So as you can see on this one, all I did is apply super glue to the base, hold on to the piece, drop it down, and then all you gotta do is grab your tweezers and put a dot of super glue right here on those edges and bend the tab and it, and it goes in place and you're done. So we'll do that on this one and then we'll press on with the crane um, itself. There are There is another slightly more complicated piece. Alright, so there is one other slightly more complicated piece. It would be this, I don't know, this railing arrangement right here. Uh, same thing though, you know, you're gonna, we're gonna lay it flat, we'll bolt, we'll make two 90 degree bends to get the rails up, and then you just make another, you just, you're just gonna bend that crease right there to make it match and lay on top of the railing right here, or the top of the crane, and then put your other pieces in place. So, not too hard, um, we'll go ahead and press on with that, but I also want to talk about some other photo etch techniques. Uh, yeah, I also want to talk about some other techniques. So the next thing I wanted to talk about was uh, annealing, basically. Some I've been asked by a few folks about annealing, and you'll notice that on the other pieces that I did, I didn't do anything to anneal the metal. I just went ahead and, whoops, took the raw pieces and bent them. Uh, but that won't always work if you're going to do some complicated. So this, this is a part I'm actually not going to use. Um, my model, I decided I didn't want to, but uh, this circle is the front, and then this band is actually supposed to be bent over and curved all the way around uh, to make a, like a little cap. And those are actually supposed to go on the gun barrels to cover the barrels of the 14-inch guns. 
Uh, but if you try and bend this, I mean, you can see it's springy right now. That won't work. You have to anneal it. So how do I go about doing that? Well, I have a little Halloween candle that I use. Uh, you can use a lighter. The thing is, is those of you who smoke or have held a lighter before know that this whole little metal area gets really, really hot. So it's easier just to use the lighter to get your candle going. Then you can control the heat. And this is where things get kind of complicated. Um, use something that will keep your fingers away from getting burned. And essentially what we are going to do is hold this metal up over the flame until it anneals. And what you're doing when you're annealing is you're softening this metal up so that it is much more malleable. The problem with this process is, and we're going to zoom in to make sure everybody can see this just fine, you have some incredibly fragile areas. And if you get this metal too hot, it'll just give way and your pieces will break. The other issue is, how do you know when you're done? Well, I watched the color change. I watched it go from a gold to kind of a purplish, uh, bluish hue. And then I know that I've finished. So, uh, if you have a very large piece, you can get away with holding it close to the flame. Uh, if you have very thin, fragile pieces, you can, you're going to have to hold it higher up away from the flame. And this annealing will make your metal super soft. Obviously, so when you have, I don't do this for big runs, like so for that little piece one and two right there, those are supposed to be nice and straight. I, I wouldn't want to anneal that, uh, which is why things like the uh, ship's gig or rigs and uh, racks, sorry, the ship's racks and any straight runs of railing, anything that I need to be straight and hold its shape with just a couple bends, I don't anneal. But if you're doing like airplane seat belts that you want to lay around funny, or you have something like this you want to change, um, you're going to have to change its shape dramatically. You're going to have to anneal it. So let's go ahead. I'm going to see if I can zoom in. There it goes right away. See that color change? Just like that. That heat. Look at that last one there. Boom. That's it. You're done. That's all you need. This one to the top. Needs a little bit more level on the edge there, and that's it. You're set. Um, let me do a one more little section, just for fun. This three, I'll, I'll anneal this corner here. It's a lot thicker, the metal, and you'll see the change a little bit more aggressively. Well, I'll have to hold it closer, but you can see the what happens. So it goes to dark gold, and then it switches over. Boom, just like that. That's it. You're all set. Put your fire out. Make sure you uh, don't burn yourself with the wax. So now you can grab this metal and just put it where you want, like so, and there's no trouble at all. Uh, then, so I do this first, and then I go ahead and I cut everything out. So let's let's see if I could do this without embarrassing myself too much here. This is a tricky little part to make. All right, I'll try and do this to keep it in camera here. Uh, whenever you do something round, it helps to have something round of the equal diameter to wrap your piece around. So I'm going to use the end of this brush. Uh, I haven't bought the dowel kit that some of you have. I think that's a really good deal and one day I will purchase it myself but for now so see how that uh, keep it in focus there went nice and round on me and it didn't didn't go springing right back the other thing you could do when you um, when you're annealing things for the very first time if it like gets a little bit of a crease sorry I gotta keep it in focus here in the camera if you get a little bit of a crease or you have a problem where it's not quite springy or starting to be a little springy on you like this kind of is at the end there we go Just coming around here that's a sign that you didn't quite get it hot enough and so when that takes place you can actually hit it with a little bit more heat and uh, try and keep it in the picture here you can hit it with a little more heat very carefully and get your shape so anyway now what we would need to do 
this is where it gets tricky and I've never made this before um, this is gonna get folded down like so so that's the front there's a little stripe there and I need to complete the circle so what I'll have to do is get a little dot of super glue or something in here and you could tack it like you could tack that edge right there with a little bit of super glue and hold it and work your way around uh, let's see if I can make that happen here I just use a toothpick put a dot of super glue on like a sticky note paper just put a little bit like this and hold it together pull on it a second and give it a minute to hold on right there and what you're trying to do is get it to obviously stay in place so you can work it around the other edge this is a really small like complicated piece that I chose to show you guys but you get the point and no it's not easy yes it takes a lot of practice and yes it takes a lot of work but when you're done it can end up looking really really amazing there are some great videos out there on um, photo etch and they show a lot of bigger easier parts and yeah so anyway let me keep working this around and I'll show you the finished piece and ta-da there it is um, I'll see if I can flip it over so you can see the underneath of it it's you know it's teeny weeny there's a little bit of glue what have you so anyway uh, it, it is possible to do this just the smaller the parts get the harder that they are to work with um, yeah so that's that let's go ahead and move on with uh, some other parts and uh, yeah get the rest of this crane together because there's more photo etch on there that we can work on see if I zoom way out it looks really small there's a dime next to it but you guys can do it it's not too bad oh one more comment I use super glue on these uh, it works really well for me you can do solder if you have any skill with soldering uh, I have a real nice soldering iron that I do electrical work with but I have yet to have anything big enough or have a need to solder anything together but that's an option there's also some slower setting glues out there um, I know Brian uh, from uh, BAS Dry Dock, he uh, was talking to me about using some Gator Grip if you need something that's going to set up slower uh, instead of using, you know, super glue. Make sure if you do use super glue, though, that you're using a um, medium filling. And then another trick that I have, uh, where is it at? Right here, uh, is InstaSet. One of the things that I'll do is I'll take whoops I'll take one of my parts and I'll dip the edge in it super glue and the other part I'll wet with this insta set and so when you connect the two pieces they instantly dry but that only works if you know exactly what you're doing and you're putting stuff together instantaneously so alright let's uh, press on with some other stuff so check out this little detail here underneath we've got these two pieces uh, that make up this little support uh, just want to show you a couple pro tips about putting that on and other flat pieces alright so there's our part that we're gonna go ahead and cut out of here we'll make sure it's in the picture and you guys already know like get your little knife in there cut off the little nibs or you can use some cutters get right up to the edge and cut it off like that this out of the way there. Get my piece back in the shot. And everybody I'm assuming knows, let's zoom back in here real closely. Alright, everybody, I think you could see right there, right there, there's a little nubs. And you you file those off. But on the back side here, uh, there, there might be like one little nub, but what I want to show on the camera here is, and it's it's being sort of articulated by a shadow the edge is dark that that flat edge is dark you see that light spot there that's the nib when 
you glue that surface down or when this was etched it's actually uh, it's actually like these tweezers that hard edge get this thing to focus here on these tweezers see how my tweezers are rounded over right there on the edge that's actually how um, the edge of that photo etches and it would be nice if it was f perfectly flat even though it's teeny tiny when you're gluing it so let's show how to do that alright so I grabbed that part and as you can see there's a dark edge right there and you can also see my little nubs right there if you grab a regular sanding stick and actually use not the coarse side but like the super fine side uh, obviously keeping a picture here you can drag it along here and get rid of your nub on the edge if you're worried about it. but this is the big part that dark line that I said is rounded over all you need is a couple of passes Let's keep it in the picture here and see that light edge how it turned light it went from dark to being light that's not flat. I mean, we're talking thousandths of an inch, but it's now this flat surface like the edge of my sanding stick. And when I put a little bit of glue on there and I stick this down, uh, it has a nice flat surface to glue to and you won't have any trouble. So that's how you know you flatten that edge out and it makes a big difference when you're gluing parts in place. So I thought I'd share that. Hopefully this came through well in the camera. Because obviously this is all super teeny tiny here's the dime here's the part you know it sizes ear but anyway alright let's go ahead and get these pieces together so moving along with our photo etch um, got this little teeny tiny piece right there there's a couple of these plates that gotta go on and uh, I so this is like another one of my little tip sections and, and there's the piece sitting there on the ground it's really hard to get those things to go where you want so what I do is I take a toothpick and this white thing on there is some sticky tack that you can get at the store and it's not really that sticky and all you do is touch your little piece and you can see it picks it right up and we'll dab it in a little bit of super glue and make sure you guys can see this place it very carefully where you want it to go and the glue will go ahead and grab and there it is it's on no problem so anyway uh, I got a few more of those and to go you can see the one up there that's how we do that little spot there just a toothpick with a little bit of sticky tack on it because obviously this just kinda holds the part but the super glue holds it a lot you know grabs permanently alright press on and they're finished, uh, at least in terms of getting all the photo etch on. The next thing we got to do here is paint them up. So, just a quick little pointer here, sorry. Uh, I drew these lines representing forward on the bow, and then this bottom line is the, is the bottom uh, where it meets the deck. Uh, where these fit in, this little ladder arrangement, one would go up this ladder, up that ladder, around up onto this ladder and I'm assuming there's some sort of control there and you have access to the rest of the crane. Uh, I opted, the kit shows you that you have another hook deal there. I, I opted not to go with it. I just did the Edward photo etch detail instead right here which I think turned out really nice. Put them both of them. I will run some uh, nylon rigging line probably easy line across the top here but uh, what I was getting at, sorry, was you need to watch where you put these because the ship's boats actually will get in the way of this bottom ladder if you're not careful what the orientation is. So basically, uh, let me show you here what I'm talking about. Right there, that little boat is adjacent to the hull, basically that this goes into and as you can see if I can do this without bumping the camera there we go and spin it around here so you can see down in there 
would bump into that ladder right there. If you weren't careful, if you put that ladder on this side, this boat is flush up against it. So, not a big deal because if it's down in there like that, everything ends up working out nicely. So, uh, all this photo etch detail, at, none of the, it looks really great, it just lays right on and glues on top. There's no complicated folding or anything to it except for the that little stand right there on the top. And then uh, I know that's a curved piece here. Get the camera situated. This railing that wraps around. But again, you see that big flat area underneath right here that came in the big egg kit that was great. You just secure some glue to it, get it set up so it's hanging onto the piece, and then just walk it all the way around. Put glue around the edge and just pull it right around and it ends up looking fantastic so alright uh, next thing we gotta do is paint both of these up and get them installed so let's go ahead and do that alright our cranes are done and in go ahead and take a look here uh, just did some basic highlighting a little bit of rust a little bit of aluminum Definitely use the navy light blue. The cable that you see along the top there is Easy Line. I use that because it's easy to glue in place. I haven't had any problems with it uh, drying out on me. And yes, it will evaporate and disappear in sunlight, uh, ultraviolet light. But I keep my models indoors, so it's not too much of a problem. But there are the cranes. They turned out pretty nice, I think. So, all right. Not a whole lot more here to show. Um, let's really go. I think for the next part, we're going to start moving up to the uh, forward superstructure here. I think that's the next major section that we need to work on. And it's probably going to take a while. Maybe I'll do that in little segments. Uh, break it up a little bit and then we've still got quite a bit of detail back here we got all the railing that goes along the hall we could set the guns in place but I gotta build the uh, airplanes one goes on this turret number three and on this catapult back here and got a lot of detail to put together up here in the front still so anyway that's a wrap for now those are the Ship's cranes, I think they look good, I think they're fun, uh, they add a lot to what's happening here, and uh, they make the build pretty interesting. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching guys, and we'll see you next time.